PacificBeerChat.com. All right, this is Cornell from PacificBeerChat.com and BrewArtInlet.com. We've also got Chelsea from BrutifulBritishColumbia.com, Mike from Mike's Craft Beer, and Steve from Mike's Craft Beer. And uh, this episode, we're going to be talking about uh, BJCP judged uh, beer competitions. Um, and I'd like to start by saying I'm drinking a porter, just a plain old porter, uh, and it's from North Paw Brewing in Coquitlam, or will be from North Paw Brewing in Port Coquitlam, and I think it's delicious. Um, but what I've noticed over the last several years is that uh, BJCP certified um, competitions for brewing often lead to what I would call uh, boring results um, with boring beers winning. And that's not to say that boring doesn't mean good beers. It's just to say that boring beers are boring. Um, and that's my personal opinion. And I would like to see a move away from BJCP certified beer competitions in the future because I would like to see um, a push for more innovation uh, in the beer industry. But I will pass it along to uh, the rest of the bloggers here to gather their thoughts. Um. I agree. Um, I mean, BJCP is a good thing. It's, it's good to have some loose guidelines, but the problem is, is that too many of the judges use it as a Bible and it stifles all creativity. Um, some of my favorite beers have no chance of winning an award because they don't fit a guideline. Like they're a blend of styles or instead of being a nice clear, uh, IPA, it's super cloudy. And that right away docks them a ton of points just because of that. And uh, they're not using it as a guideline. It's It's got to be that or it loses. And it, it's really boring. And maybe I'll cut in really quick, Mike, uh, just to say, if you're not familiar with BJCP, um, that acronym is uh, Beer Judges Certification Program. Program. I think so, yeah. And uh, what it does is it basically lists um, in quite a lot of detail um, what a beer should be, ideally. So for an IPA, it's going to tell you how bitter it should be. Uh, it's going to tell you what flavors you should get from it. And it's even going to tell you what color it should be. So as Mike's just saying, if you got an IPA and it's cloudy, or you got a stout and it's blonde, um, it's not going to do very well in these competitions. And uh, as Mike says, some of our favorite beers are new and innovative. And although they keep common names like IPA or stout when it's uh, blonde color, uh, it means they would not do well in the corresponding um, category in a competition. Yeah. <clears throat> what do you think, Chelsea? Um, yeah, well, I was just going to say, like, I don't have, so I don't have much experience with um, competitions, I suppose, that are going by the BJCP guidelines, right? Like, um, Festival, which is probably the beer festival that I know about the judging aspect, I found it really innovative, like the past couple of years that I've been involved anyways, because they're, they're not going by the style guidelines, they're kind of tweaking the um, categories to include the beers that are being submitted by the presenters. So rather than saying, okay, like this beer needs to fit this category in order for us to judge it, they're saying, we've got 28 sort of IPAs, we can't do them all in one category, what if we take, you know, this many that are going to be Imperial IPAs and split them off, or this many that are going to be like, I suppose this time around we could do Northeast IPAs and split them off. So I think that's kind of, it's really innovative because you're allowing the brewers that are coming there to submit the product that they feel is their best and then changing how you're going to be judging it, what you're looking at it um, to suit the beers that are in the category basically. And I think they've even like combined categories or deleted categories depending on what was going to be there and what wasn't. Plus, I think um, the fact that you get to have the people's choice is also, I mean, the people's choice and the judge's choice, have you ever been to an award show where that lined up? No. Like, no. And, and is the people's choice beer, is it a good beer? Probably, right? I mean, the majority of people liked it. So yeah, I kind of, I, I would sort of agree with no guidelines are sometimes good in a lot of ways for innovation. Agreed. Yeah, and I mean, if I can, if I can pull this out uh, a little further, um, what I tend to see is, you know, and it, it's not necessarily a bad thing to have a competition where uh, BG, BJCP guidelines are observed. However, the effects can be fairly profound, and I don't think we think about that um, 
I mean, I've worked at breweries. I know a lot of us have been pretty close to breweries. Um, and I know a lot of us go and buy beer. And uh, if we're deciding between two beers and we see one with a sticker that says Canadian Champion or BC Best IPA, that's going to drive some sales for that brewery. Yeah, or Brewery of the Year. Yeah, Beer of the Year. So if you've got BJCP guidelines um, deciding what the Beer of the Year is, you're driving sales for a brewery. And what I think that really does is it pushes breweries to brew beers that fit within guidelines. I mean, more to this point, I've spoken to people from breweries who have BJCP certifications, and they've said things like, hey, you want to win an award? Give me some of your beer. I'll tell you where it fits in best. Uh, and that's where we see things like people putting in amber ales into lager competitions and coming out with the silver medal in a lager, even though it's marketed as an amber ale. Um, because for these breweries, winning an award is a big opportunity to uh, make some sales, which everybody needs to do. So I really think that BJCP awards are pushing breweries towards a little bit of modernization uh, to the detriment of you and I, the drinker. Yeah. <clears throat> So I'm just wondering then, like when we're talking about BJCP guidelines and, and and sort of competitions and stuff, are competitions worthwhile? I was talking to one of the, I think it was like the marketing guy from um, Festival, and and his take, I don't know if this is shared by everybody on the board, but his take was that, and he said, especially coming from the wine world, like competitions are way overdone. There's this, there's that, everybody's got some kind of new award of the week. Does that help? brewers to participate in competitions or does it help the consumer to have breweries participate in competitions i mean i'll, I'll step in and say that it's very important because like Cornell said you win an award and your brewery explodes um just look at old yale brewing winning uh the sasquatch stout for the best beer of the year i forget what year that was at the canadian brewing awards and they went from brewing a whole bunch of beers to only basically doing the sasquatch stout trying to keep up with demand because it just blew up so it's, it's worth having these awards just for the industry. I mean, you can just see it. Um, every time a brewery wins, they, uh, especially like for a brewery, a brewery of the year or a beer of the year, it just blows up. Yeah, and to, uh, to Mike's point, sorry, I totally lost my train of thought there. <laughs> Where was I going with that? Sorry, guys. No worries. <laughs> Well, I guess, I guess right now, like if you have one definitive competition, right? Like if you have the Canadian Brewing Awards or the BC Brewing Awards, I guess that's maybe the competition that's going to drive your sales. But if every month or every week you have a new competition being won and you're winning a gold or a silver, are those ones still important and relevant? I guess maybe that's more what I'm trying to say. Like are, are, are multiple ways and multiple times and places and events and stuff where you're having your beers win something, is that helpful in the long run? Is there a chance that it's going to become oversaturated? Well, I think it absolutely will become oversaturated in the long term, but uh, I think the fact remains is wine has definitely, if we're comparing it to wine, has had um, a way bigger day in the sun and people are way more savvy about wine, whereas craft beer is simply too new on the scene. And um, people are looking for anything to differentiate. The biggest thing I think consumers look for is labels. And uh, that goes hand in hand with a beer award sticker you can shuck on. Yeah. Uh, if I see a cool label or if my friend, you know, this is what happens when my friends try and do nice things for me and buy me beer. They usually buy me a cool label beer. And if there's an award on it, a uh, sticker on it, that probably helps them too, right? <laughs> uh, they're looking for those guideposts. I think that's what exists for most people at this point. That will probably change, though, if people become more savvy. Oh, for sure, yeah. Uh, I guess the next question for me is, when I look at uh, these competitions, is, so what is the point? What is the ideal point? What are we trying to do uh, with these beer competitions, ideally, in a perfect world? I mean, uh, I can step in and say it, I guess I they should basically, I know it's all subjective, but it should come out to what is the best beer on the market. Um, not the best of style, not the best to some regular, like the BJCP. What is the best beer? No flaws, biggest flavor. You'd have to have a wide range of judges because everyone's flavor profile is different. But I think that's where it should be going is what tastes the best. 
What I think would maybe be more helpful just from sort of moving along, um, you know, the ability of brewers and to get some some feedback is, is rather than having, you know, like, hey, this was the best IPA picked by this panel of judges. Like, are there any awards that actually like submit feedback on the beers? Like, I know that BJCP does do that sometimes where they're getting their scorecards right on, on the beer and then they're giving that back to the brewery. Is that happening much? I don't I don't know about the other competitions too much, right? I don't know about in Canada. I know in the, with the um, oh, what is it? The big one in the States, the Great American... Beer Festival? Whatever. Yeah. There's the big American <laughs> Brewing Awards or whatever. And they do give back the uh, score sheets at the end so they can kind of get an idea of what the judges thought and uh, why they docked them or gave them the points that they gave them but i'm not sure if the canadian bring awards or the bc beer awards do that because i could see that being helpful in the long run like i mean if if you know if i have an ipa and i'm submitting it to all these different award shows and it doesn't win i'm not really getting much back from that right but if i have a panel of experts that's drinking my beer and is saying you know what this one's okay but there's this element of it or even just seeing how your IPA or your pale ale or whatever your run-of-the-mill beer is lines up against the however many other breweries are competing against you. Like just, I think that that feedback would maybe be really important, but we're missing that because we're just saying, hey, you know, number one, this beer, and you don't really know why you won maybe, or, or you don't know who else almost won or who definitely didn't win. Yeah. You know, I think that would move the the market along or move our, our um, sort of skill level along as a market better, right? If we could get that feedback. Yeah. And fair, you do get that with the BJCP competitions, the, the highest level ones like the BC Beer Awards, and I believe the Canadian Beer Awards. Um, you do get a package back telling you what you were deficient in. Um, and I have been told by breweries that they find it important uh, to get that information back, um, to know where they're deficient. My only argument would be to them you know, is is it really as important to know where your pre mail doesn't meet guidelines, or is it more important to you to win a uh, People's Choice Award at the BC Beer Awards? What's really going to drive your sales more, knowing you, the deficiencies uh, in regards to guidelines um, from beer judges, or winning, you know, like I say, the People's Choice Award? Although um, the only thing I say about People's Choice Awards is that almost every festival that I go to, it ends up being a pretty boring logger. Not like a really exciting, well-made. It's just kind of a meh. Pablo Escanar. <laughs> but that's what I see at most. That's that's fair. Uh, but I, I still think that's a bigger indicator. Is, is my only question. But I, I agree with you, Mike. I, I think you that I want to know the best beer from these competitions, and I think that's what most consumers think when they see an award was that this beer was voted best beer. Yeah. Uh, and I think the beer industry really needs to embrace its subjectivity. Uh, drinking, food, drink, everything, a, a personal experience, it's entirely subjective. To try and objectify it through guidelines, uh, like the BJCP rules, I think is, you know, kind of takes the soul out of beer, uh, in a sense. Uh, yeah. To prescribe certain colors really takes the experience away from it. Um, I, I always say the best beer I ever had happened to be Kokanee Gold at the bottom of uh, Blackcomb, uh, 18. Uh, and yeah, to my memory, that was the best tasting beer I've ever had. It's clearly not the best beer, but I think, you know, personal subjective experience plays a way larger part in what people are buying than oh, yeah. these other beers. And uh, So if we're, if we're not going then by BJCP, then... And you're saying personal subjective experience like so how, how how do you weigh that out then like how do you know I, whose experience is better at telling us what's good and what's not good I, i'd say the the larger uh, volume of responses you have is is the best indicator so like people's choice so people's choice yeah get the largest amount of people you can in the room um and what they say or an, an aggregate is what the word i'm looking mm -hmm. for say. what if just for like the purposes of kind of you know, trying to screw this up. What if the largest subjective experience of all the, you know, the biggest crowd prefers something that's really middle of the road? Because when you're looking at a thousand different people trying beer, there might be 10 really, really great beers, but they're all trying. The one beer that they can all agree on is actually the beer that's maybe, I mean, like we said, it's the lager, right? It's it's not the one that's maybe the most interesting beer. Yeah. Well, I, I still think that's, to me, that's a more real answer than uh, hitting a, a guideline. 
Uh, I don't think I think that it, it's always going to be imperfect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The day. So embrace the imperfectness. If you've got 20 guys or 20 people in a room um, with 20 beers, stop worrying about what color the beer is. Uh, stop worrying about where it hits IBUs on your tongue. Give it a rating out of 10. Aggregate those ratings. Tell me what the best beer is. And uh, I think it, it, you do run into trouble anytime you put, you know, a thousand people in a room. Um, but what I tend to go with most are, you know, give me 10 people I trust. Um, give me 10 beer drinkers I trust and tell me what their favorite beer to beer competition is. So we're already bringing people I trust to these BJCP competitions, people who drink a lot of beer, people like Mike and Joe Weave, uh, and I think even yourself, you've done some judging. You know, I trust you guys to tell me which beer you think is best, um, which you, you enjoyed the most on that day. And I prefer that sort of best beer over one that best fit the guidelines. Yeah. You know, just as you were talking, I was kind of thinking about it. The term best is kind of meaningless, right? Like, I, oh. well, like, what if we said, like, most refreshing beer, beer I'm going to enjoy the best um you know, after skiing or beer that pairs best with Mexican food. Like, like sometimes best is really hard to quantify. But if we're looking at beers in, 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 as an experience, right, then maybe that kind of makes it a little bit easier, too, to kind of say, okay, so what really are we looking for when we talk about what the best actually is? When you're not using something like color, aroma, you know, all of those sort of things laid out in the guidelines. Yeah, and uh, Mike Ansley from the Beer Raider would agree 100% with you. Yes, he and- would. <laughs> I, I would too. I think I, those are way better indicators. I, you know what? If um, if there was, you know, I don't know, Vancouver Beer Blogger's best, you know, after work Thursday night patio beer sticker. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, that's, the beer, that's the beer I'm picking up, not the, the BJCP BC Beer Awards top amber lager sticker. Yeah. yeah. That, one I'm going for and I think that's the one most consumers are going for too and um, I think that's probably more indicative of consumer tastes um, so that's that's honestly where I would like to see things go makes sense to me um, if, if I could bring something up one of the issues that I find with most beer awards is that it's usually one free entry for a brewery and then you pay extra money for every other entry so a brewery with more money can just pepper every uh, every type of beer, and they have a better chance of winning because they've spent all that money. Um, and then there's also breweries that don't package, and they, like uh, Brassneck, would probably win all kinds of awards because they make really solid beers, but they don't package. So you could have the best beer, but you haven't actually judged all the best beers, which kind of yeah. hurts the competitions as well. Yep. Yeah. Well, I, I think it comes back to there's no best beer, yep. but if we're going to play this silly game, <laughs> let's just embrace the subjectivity of the whole thing, right? Let's throw this, this what is inevitably going to fail, attempted ob- objectivity out the window, and let's just have a bit of fun with it. Um, and I, I mean, we've seen on the other side of things, breweries just dropping out of competitions. I mean, Four Winds famously didn't put anything forward as far as I know. Uh, in the last BC Beer Awards. And at first I thought they were idiots. And I was like, ah, maybe they got this figured out, actually. Well, they don't even need it. Yeah. Well, they, they don't. I, mean, um, I know people in Oregon that trade for their beer. So, I mean, the word's out. They're a great brewery. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah, absolutely. So I guess my one last question then is, <laughs> unfortunately we're all... Agreeing to some extent, I guess. Yeah. Where's Where's Beer Raider? Where is he? He should be arguing with us. But he, he'd agree. That's the problem. <laughs> oh, darn. <laughs> so, I mean, as consumers then, do BJCP um, judge events? Do they meet our needs as a consumer? Um, I think they meet the needs of the majority of the consumers. Um I think it's obvious to most that we're not your average consumer and we're not really what those events are actually going for. Um, we're, we're the people going out trying to f- try different beer every day and most people want to grab their one beer and they drink that beer over and over again, um, even if it's craft beer. So I don't think we're 
we're not the target audience. You know, I remember our chat with Paul Pine, yep. um, and and he was kind of talking about being a Cicerone versus having BJCP, and I I think like maybe that's more of the direction is is having that education around um, you know the the proper baking and and pouring and pairing and cellaring and all of, all of the good intentions around beer without having a little check mark of stylistics that you're that you're taking off right. Yeah. So I, I think that beer education and, and knowing the difference between what a good beer is and what a bad beer is and why, I think the why is actually really important, maybe more important, right? Yeah. Um, like I've done a couple off flavors courses and that's that's been really helpful for me. But so like I, I feel like that's maybe more the direction that me as somebody who's like really into beer would want to move in is just knowing having a greater beer education. Yeah. But I also, I feel like I have to give some kudos to BJCP guidelines because if it wasn't for the guidelines, I mean, I'm not I'm not at the beer festival judging beers because I don't have BJCP, right? But I looked up the guidelines, especially the first year that I started, and a few people that I've learned from are certified, and they've given me some good pointers. And so having an idea of the styles, but not really paying attention to them, but knowing that they're there, I think does help a little bit, you know, at least yeah. to give you um, a concrete example. And then when something breaks those style guidelines but blows your mind, that you can appreciate it without kind of, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. Do I make any sense? Yeah. No, I totally <laughs> agree. I mean, it doesn't matter what your education of beer is. It's always important to keep furthering it. To learn the BJCB guidelines is still great because you will get a basic idea of what the styles are. Now, you just got to make sure that you keep up on what those styles are and change and know that that's not the be-all and end-all. I mean, the best beer you have may not follow those guidelines, but it doesn't hurt to know all the different styles of beer out there because there is so many and um you barely scratch the surface when you go to the liquor store absolutely yeah i mean i'm, I'm totally guilty i think on an earlier episode of this show for saying you know i'm angry because this beer is called a goza and it's not a goza to my mind it doesn't meet style guidelines <laughs> <laughs> so but I, I really loved what you were saying chelsea i totally remembered your name that time uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice one <laughs> And um, and I think Paul, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he talked about felt his job as a cicerone was to be your guide to beer, and uh, or something to that extent. And I love that sort of view of what it is. And um, when I I guess personally when I see a competition, that's what I see their their role should be. Yeah. Uh, is guiding consumers to beers they might like. Um, so I guess that's sort of the crux of uh, my my argument against BJCP is I don't see them necessarily being as good a guide as something else uh, for consumers. They're almost like a gate, a gatekeeper, I suppose. If, if you have the right key, you can get past this, but if not, then you're out, even though you might do be a delicious mishmash. Or owners, I won't let you buy Warhammer toys unless you know enough. <laughs> I never bought those. <laughs> yeah, neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, guys, that's all I wanted to. I got one other thing, um, and it's an unpopular opinion, mm -hmm. so I thought I'd bring it up. Um, this year at the Canadian Brewing Awards, they <laughs> decided not to allow any of the uh, macro-owned breweries compete at all. Um, and I think that usually you should just try to make better beer and beat them at their own game instead of saying, we can't beat you, so we're just going to kick you out. And um, I don't know, what is your opinion on that? Like I said, no, it's I'm, unpopular. I agree with you, Mike. Um, you know, if, if we're so good at making beer, if the craft um, industry is so good at making beer, it shouldn't be a problem to have those macro guys there. And if all else fails, maybe it pushes them to make a better beer. I don't see a downside in inviting uh, large breweries to the competition. Um, ideally, you know, maybe one day they they integrate some cooperative ownership model where everybody gets paid living wages and they yeah. make decent beer too. Well, I, th I think that a lot of the guys that work for the macro companies or macro owned breweries, not I'm not talking Budweiser and all that crap, but the Granville Islands and all that, they probably do get paid better than most of the guys that are in the industry on the craft, like the independent craft side. 
and as we can, we've seen, I mean, they're still capable of making decent beer. If we want to talk about large breweries owning smaller breweries, you've got Turning Point Stanley Park. Uh, I believe it's owned by, like, Labatt Sapporo or ABM something. ABMF through Labatt. It, yeah, Granville Island, as you say. Molson um, Coors, yep. Yeah. Sneaky Weasel. Well, there's the the Northam Group, which is Whistler Brewing. But that is a, that is still an independent group. Like, it's not owned by a macro company. But all these breweries that we're talking about, yeah. you know. Mill they're, Street. Lafty, they're still capable of making decent beer. Yeah. I think I think the, the, the thing is, is you have to define what you're talking about. The Canadian Brewing Awards, if we're talking about beers that are brewed in Canada, then yeah, there should be an invite to these companies, right? If we're talking about craft brewing awards and we're talking about maybe a certain size, like I know Festivale implemented that, you have to be below a certain production size to be invited, right? Then it's fair not to be invited, but... Yeah, like I think you have to be really clear because we're going to have pretty soon a lot of breweries out there. And I know for myself, I'm not really that interested in Sneaky Weasel. You know what? Like, I don't really care about drinking their beer. Right? But like, I mean, even if it was amazing beer, I don't know. Like, I guess for me, like, I'm, I, I support local wherever I go. And so for me, I, you know, but I think that to be fair, if it's the Brewing Awards of Canada, then yeah you should be invited unless we're going to talk about it's the nano brewing awards of canada and then who's going to come to that right so when i always laugh because you look at the states and every year the craft is it craft brewers guild in the states every year they increase the size of a craft brewery to keep sam adams in it's like (laughs) we got to make sure they stay in because they're still independent and it's like if you want to have a size limit you can't keep increasing it to keep one guy in yeah so i think i don't know it's just I don't want to see the Molsons of the world at these brewing awards. But if it's someone that was a craft brewery that was bought out and they're still making beer that's winning an award, screw everyone else. If you can't beat them, make a better beer. That's just my opinion. Yeah. (laughs) I think it's fair to go by production size. And then, I mean, maybe you want to, like, if we're looking at that, maybe in the U.S., I don't know if there's a model, maybe there's a mandatory minimum production size for some festivals right like some places that are really tiny aren't going to be able to get in because you're not going to be able to supply enough beer for that festival right so i don't know yeah i think i think production size is a is a fair way to do it but i think you need to kind of define the term and not just kind of like snarkily say hey you used to be one of us but now you know what sorry your investors sold out you can't come yeah that's not very fair after they've been working that hard and the recipes are the same and the people are the same yeah I don't know, like I said, unpopular opinion. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Maybe we could bring it up again another time. <laughs> yeah. So are we are we gonna talk about the Canadian Brewing Awards, Brewery yeah. of the Year? What we think of winner? Might as well. Go for it. Well you, you... I was surprised. I mean, I don't, I don't want to sound like I don't like this brewery, Mount Begbie, right? Mount Begbie yeah. Brewing, yes. What's that? Yeah. That's the thing. I, I don't think that they're a bad brewery. I was just like honestly shocked that out of all of the breweries in Canada, Mount Begbie won, and like, I really, cu- I want to find out why. Oh, well, we know why. Beer was it? What was it? Well, it's because it's a BJCP certified judge competition, and their beers. I like their beers. Nothing is exceptional, but they're all really well made, but they all follow the guidelines to a T. So it was because all of their beers did really well, like all of the beers consistently scored well, and that's why they won? Yes. Yeah, they won cream ale, or they, they meddled in cream ale, scotch ale, something else. Yeah, I got the uh, whole and list here, but I can't figure it out that quickly. Okay. I don't really know like, what the, the process is, so I wasn't sure that was it, so... They're, they're good beers. It's just, I'm sorry, Mount Begbie's, Begbie's been around the block for ages, and uh, I've never once, you know, been to the liquor store and looked at my friend and said, "Ooh, we got to try this new Mount Begbie seasonal." Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that sort of sentiment that "Ooh, we got to try this," or "Hey, buddy, you got to try this beer," or "I'm bringing this beer to my friend, she's going to love it," that's what really drives craft beer is those sort of ooh-ahs, wow, this is amazing. Not the, uh, oh yeah, that was, you know, that was fine. That was, was really great... solid. Okay, next one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's nothing against Mount Begbie. They clearly make good beer. Um, that's not even up for discussion. Uh, but um, does them winning help 
the industry at large. It helps them for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, they just moved into a bigger production facility or they're moving. I'm not sure. So they're about to ramp up production. So it's really going to help them in sales because people from across the country will be clamoring for their beer now. Sorry, it was Kolsch, Scotch Ale, Cream Ale, and they may have got one more. Yeah. I, I can't. Some people have said Scotch Ale, Kolsch, beer. Cream. That's it, I think. Yeah, and then Brewery of the Year. Yeah. Um, so it's, yeah, I mean, they make good beer. It's just. They're not the ones pushing the industry forward. And, you know, when you talk about the best breweries in Canada, I don't think um, Mount Bigby Brewing would be anywhere near that, uh, near the top of anyone's list. Probably not. And that, not to say they're a bad brewery. It's just to say nobody would list them there. I don't think any of the judges that would give them a gold medal would honestly say to themselves in the same breath, yeah, you win gold for um, cream ale. And you also are easily the best brewery in Canada. Although, would I, I'd probably be right in saying that we wouldn't say that, say the the 15% or whatever of craft beer, but the vast majority might actually say that about them because they are so approachable. No, I don't think they would. Um, and there, and this is this is also biased data, but some of the most interesting data I find right now on craft beer is, is from Untapped, and admittedly. It's, it's going to be biased in that people using Untapped are people uh, that are quite into beer. They're not your every your everyday drinkers. But what can't be ignored is just the, the raw uh, amount. And when you look at a brewery like uh, Mount Begbie, I don't even think it reaches like the top 100 in Canada. Um, and that's, I don't know, I mean, I might get slaughtered for this, but I, I it's probably in my... As far as I can tell, the best sort of aggregate of data there is. But I, I, again, I think the problem there is that places like Untapped and Beer Advocate and Rate Beer and all that, it caters to the beer geek. Um, so we're going to be going after the next big seasonal, the big imperial, the big crazy something. And we forget about the fact that all of these breweries are clamoring now to start brewing tons of lagers. That's what people want. Parallel 49 right. sells a shit ton of their craft lager. Um, everyone's making a craft lager. They're starting to make rice lagers and all that, which I can't understand. But um, Well, that's you hit a wall and you have to increase the sales somehow. Yeah. But, like, and, but a and huge that, increase. Yeah. Huge increase. You guys have this too, and your group of friends or your, your extended family, when somebody wants to know about beer, who do they ask? Me, yeah. They're going to ask you, <laughs> and they're going to say, what's good? And you're the guy that's using Untapped. Yeah, but then I have to tell them something that I'm probably not going to drink because they're not going to want that big IPA. Right. So if I asked you, let's say, what are your top three BC breweries? What would you say? Uh, it's probably. Or give me your three or to five of your favorite. I don't know. Storm Brewing, Twin Sales, Strange Fellows. Let's go for those just off the top of my head. Yeah. Chelsea, you want to give it a go? Uh, Four Winds, Dogra, Twin Sails. All right, and not that this is a test. I just wanted to see how well it would match up against uh, the Untapped's raw data. So if we look at, at BC's you know, top three or four breweries, according to Untapped, you've got Boombox. Uh, I love Boombox, yeah. Four Winds. Uh, twin Sails. Yeah. But uh, again, Untapped is only being used by the Ultra Beer Geek, right? No, but we know it's fast. <laughs> that's that's true. <laughs> the Ultra Beer Geek is the one that's is are the ones that are influencing, you know, their friends and family what to drink. I agree. They're but really, asked. what are these beer events for? Are they for us or are they for the masses? Well, they're for us and then we tell the masses. <laughs> yeah. And we tell them they're wrong and we say what should have won. <laughs> oh my god i hate having to break the news to people when they tell me about this delicious beer like my one friend is like chelsea have you tried sneaky weasel i'm like no he's like oh it's amazing like like i i gotta i we gotta go out man we gotta go try some beers together like it's probably not actually it's probably not that bad you know i might have it on a hot day and it's probably very refreshing but i i hate being the person to be like ooh, um Please don't buy me that. I'm probably not going to like it very much. And I sound like such an asshole, right? But 
I've done that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've had the same conversation many a time. <laughs> yeah, I just, I think at the end of the day, uh, the BJCP is a poor indicator of, you know, what really beer drinkers are enjoying at any given time. Um, yeah. And I think, unfortunately, you've got many examples. Um, number one example is is maybe Mount Begbie, a, a decent a good brewery uh, being named the best brewery in Canada um, and to the, the detriment of all these great breweries that we've just talked about here briefly, um, you know, not winning awards. I don't think any of the, the breweries that we just mentioned, did they win any awards of the Canadian Brewing Awards? Oh, I'd have to look. I can't remember. I didn't look uh, that closely. <laughs> mm-hmm. I saw Mount Begbie and I kind of thought, oh, well. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I sound I sound really bad, right? But I just I don't know. I just thought, well, if that's who's gonna win, then do I really care? Right. You know. And I'll, uh, like, I'll stress again that I've been to Mount Baby Brewing, and I really like their beers. I just don't go to my way to buy them very often. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. I, Sorry, we, Mount Baby. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> I'm never getting a beer from Mount Baby again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this was fun putting people down. Yeah, yeah. Oh, jeez, he drops his phone. <laughs> Literally yeah. putting people down. Now you yeah. put yourself down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I just want to say then, I think that if um, we can't trust Canadian Brewing Awards to tell us which beer is good and to tell consumers which beer is good, do we have an alternate system or are we working on something? Like, what's what's the backup? Chelsea's favorite what's beer. What's the next plan? <laughs> Uh, the alternate system. I don't. There's. I used to really, really enjoy the camera awards, uh, for the camera BC and camera Vancouver. I thought they did a really good job yeah. of, basically, you had a group of people who were self-confessed beer lovers, voting on what they felt were the best basic beer categories, which they decided themselves. Yeah. Uh, they decided what put it, was put in an IPA category, uh, best brewery, those sorts of things, and. Uh, Unfortunately, they sort of pared down their awards and they basically give out a best brewery, best branding, you know, basic four or five awards. Yeah. But I thought that was the best alternative to and be they, quite honest. They got rid of best blogger. Like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. Now we'll never know, right, Mike? Yeah, I came in like third place, <laughs> then second place, and I can never get first. <laughs> Number one, he's dropped off the map, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you, you usurped them by um, vacuum, right? There we go. Sounds good. <laughs> I'm going to print my own. Maybe we need to have the BC Blogger Beer Award. Oh, this has just been one long, ad- long advert for it. Yeah. Well, I think that, you know, foreshadowing, I think actually Mike from the Beer Raider might be trying to plan something like that. Yeah. I'm a little bummed out he's not here tonight because uh, I think he would have got into that. Yeah, uh, but I think that's, you know, without trying to be too on the nose, that's that's probably where it's at, a Critics' Choice Award. Um, you know, an aggregate Critics' Choice Award, yeah. so nobody, or no group can really take hold of it. Um, that's probably where it's at. Uh, the only unfortunate thing is, you know, how we were talking earlier about opening it up to every brewery, right? Not, not No one of us can drink every beer in B.C., um, we'll try, so that, but we yeah. can't. <laughs> we'll do our yeah. darnest if anybody's listening from the brewery. Uh, yeah, that might be where it's at. Sounds good. Cheers. Well, we probably should just uh, close this out now. Yep. So, um, thanks for joining yeah. us. Cheers, guys. Cheers. <laughs> I ran out. We hope you've enjoyed this episode. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Pacific Beer Chat or at PacificBeerChat.com. If you've enjoyed the episode, you can give us a review on iTunes. It'll help us get some more recognition. You can also find us on Google Play Music, Stitcher, and YouTube. If you'd like to, you can also give us some feedback at feedback at PacificBeerChat.com. Cheers. <laughs>